right. Uh, first day of free agency is in the books. The Habs were busy on and off the ice. Some for good reason, some for uh, not very good. We'll talk about that and a little bit more today. So, yeah. First off, I don't think I could really start talking about free agency without mentioning about at 12.36 Eastern Time. Right in the middle of the, the real hot first hour when all these signings start becoming official, the Habs decide then, at that time, to release a letter from Jeff Molson, who is the owner, the CEO, the chairman of the board of the Montreal Canadiens, of the Molson family, and decides, okay, now we're going to put this now, and kind of get it to be flooded into the news of the day, which is, I can promise he was done on purpose. Anyway, I'm not going to go too much into it just because we're talking about it on the podcast for tomorrow's episode, so uh, look out for that. Link will be in the description below. It will either be out late Thursday or early Friday morning. What I will say about the statement here, however, is, and by the way, you know a situation is really bad when you have to make a second statement about drafting a kid, and the Prime Minister is disappointed in you. Say what you want about Justin Trudeau. Bit of a bad sign, Montreal. Bit of a bad sign. Here's a, the end of the statement. The reason I'm only going to mention this part is because I think it speaks volumes to, first off, why this statement came out. Uh, this is the last little paragraph you can say. Lastly, I want to thank everyone that provided their feedback on this situation, including our partners and sponsors, uh, so that this mistake becomes an opportunity to grow and raise awareness. Now, the reason I'm only mentioning that is because that's the only reason this statement came out. Sponsors were making noise. Now, if you don't know, the Montreal Canadiens have a partnership with a very, a very well-known restaurant chain called Saint Hubert's here in Quebec. It's very well known. It's like this restaurant with like a little chicken on it, and like the chicken is actually on the Laval Rockets jersey. It's again like there's a Saint Hubert's like down the road from the Bell Center, and there was word that they were going to you know break away from the Habs because of this selection, and apparently they were very much shocked by it. Uh, that's why the owner came out and said something, and I, I can promise you that. Anyway, going on to the signing side of stuff. First off, the biggest move of the day for Montreal is one that actually just came out a few minutes ago. The Habs appear to have signed Mike Hoffman, a former St. Louis Blue, former Ottawa Senator. Remember when he was a San Jose Shark for about 10 minutes before he was flipped? <laughs> former Florida Panther. Uh, this guy, for those of you who don't know, I'm sorry, the contract is three years, the AAV is $4.5 million. Pretty good contract. There is, however, a bit of black mist around Mike Hoffman. There were accusations against his, I think at the time, fiancé, I believe they're married now, uh, back when he played for the Ottawa Senators. Eric, and this may be not the easiest to talk about, so if you want to skip ahead a little, a little bit, go ahead. Anyway, so Eric Carlson and his wife, who um, before had a stillborn child. After the child, after everything had happened, sorry, there were reports that the Carlsons were taking legal action around Hoffman's fiance, blaming or saying that she had sent them from like a burner account on Twitter and that uh, tweets about maybe some stuff around what happened with and why they lost the baby. Completely disgusting stuff. Nothing was ever proven in court or anything. Again, and this was all levied towards Hoffman's significant other, but there has always kind of been this thing of does Hoffman have the right attitude? Uh, he was healthy scratched a few times in St. Louis. There was just this, mm, like he, he's not, there isn't the same thing said about Hoffman that there is Tony D'Angelo or other people I've named, Logan Mayhew, but there, there's still this kind of, what is there? There's been, it's been quiet the past couple of years, but it, it is still that reputation's around Hoffman. And naturally, that is going to be mentioned because of, well, with the Logan Mayhew stuff, every kind of move Montreal makes with a guy's character is under a much larger microscope than any other team right now. But what does, why would you sign Hoffman? Okay, simple stuff. So this is going back to the 14-15 season to the current past season, 2021. 27 goals, 29, 26, 22, 36 with the Panthers, 29, 17 in 52 games this year, would have hit 20 in a full 82 game series. He is set for 20 goals every year. What's kind of weird about this signing to me, though, is 
the Habs have in the past, and Mark Bergerman in, in a French interview, without saying it was Pacioretty, called out previous Habs for being able to score goals, and that was it. Yeah, that's, that's Pacioretty. Now, the issue kind of with Hoffman is if you look at his advanced numbers, he scores goals, especially on the power play, which is what Montreal need. However, he doesn't do anything else. He is kind of a defensive liability, and it just kind of, it's another example of Montreal kind of going against something they've said in the past. So I, I don't really understand it. And I kind of have up in front of me a sort of mock projection of where I see Montreal's line looking. And kind of this is a little transition from Hoffman moving forward. The Habs have a lot of wingers. Now, with even without even putting Hoffman into the lineup, there's Drouin, there's Toffoli, there is RFA, a true electing who they have to sign, uh, Paul Byron, Cole Caulfield, Gallagher, Anderson, and Armia. Now, I have penciled into the top six Toffoli, Drouin, Caulfield, and Gallagher, and that's leaving out Anderson. You may think I'm crazy. You think of how well Drouin played previously with Suzuki. I think that makes sense. You could move it along, but however, one of those wingers being Anderson, Gallagher, Caulfield, Toffoli, or Drouin is outside the top six. If you add Hoffman, that's two of them. Now, there's, there's having depth, but at the same time, guys need their minutes or else they're not going to produce. Now, what's kind of weird also, if, if you look at this now, um, and this is some quick math on my part, is if looking at cap friendly, now that Montreal have made the Hoffman move, they've actually updated it now. What a great site, cap friendly. The Habs projected cap space is 900,073, uh, wish I could say numbers, uh, $973,630 in cap space. They are yet to sign Corey Perry. Apparently an offer has been made. Now, the, the big problem I kind of see is they have two RFAs. I mentioned Lekkonen, and now Jesperi Kakinyemi as well. That won't be a massive number. It won't be long-term. It will be a shorter bridge. I can't see it being more than three in the realm of $3 million. Now, the, the kind of issue is, okay, where's that money coming from? And it kind of makes you think, okay, so th there's a trade coming. Because other, like, there has to be, because otherwise you're not signing your guys. Now, there are some other depth moves. I'm not going to mention too much about Chris Weidman or Jean-Sebastien D or Cedric Paquette. They're depth guys. I don't expect much from Chris Weidman. Yeah, he had a great year in the KHL. That's the KHL. I look at his previous NHL games as more of a reference for that. He's a depth defenseman. He's right-handed, so I'd imagine he's going to have the inside track to play in the third pair of Alexander Romanov. Then Sebastian D, probably an AHL player. Uh, Cedric Paquette is not an everyday NHLer in my opinion. He's a French-born player, left-handed centerman, so maybe if there's an off-night or there's an injury he gets in, but I, I don't know. And if you also look at it, there, there's also a necessity to a move. Because, so first off, Hoffman looking back and rewinding a bit, that's a replacement for Thomas Tatar. Now, which is weird because I thought maybe you would just go with Cole Caulfield. That's just me. Crazy, right? Now, if you also look down the middle, the big issue is, is if you don't sign another centerman, okay, first line center, Nick Suzuki, then Jesper Kakinemi, then it's, you have to move up Jake Evans, and after that, Ryan Paling or Cedric Paquette, you see what I mean? They need to sign another centerman. Otherwise, you're so young and inexperienced down the middle, now that Phil Deneau has left for the LA Kings, which, tier. Now, besides the off ice stuff, the on-ice decisions that really irked me today in the past couple of years, actually. This is the third consecutive offseason where Mark Bergman has signed a gritty, physical, stay-at-home defenseman. First, it was Ben Sherratt. Last year, it was Joel Edmondson, a four-year deal, $3.4 million. And then today, David Savard, four years, $3.5 million. Sorry, Edmondson was also 3.5. So I don't see the trade projection yet, uh, or protection yet, on cap friendly. However, it is the same length and, and money that Joe Edmondson got, except Savard is right-handed. If you look at it, there is an argument to be made that that David Savard is the right-handed Sherratt or Edmondson. It is a defenseman type that Montreal has, not what they need. They need a puck mover. They have needed one since they traded P.K. Subban, if we're honest. If Jeff Petrie gets hurt, the only defenseman who can skate is probably... Kulak, who they don't like playing his game, and they don't like Romanov playing, period. So it's just these, these mountain men who move as fast as a mountain. 
And you just kind of see this. Okay, so so far, this isn't going to be the final roster, you hope. The replacement for Dino is Paquette. And the replacement for Weber is Savard and Weidman? You see the problems here. Now, Bergevin did acknowledge today in his, his media availability, they do need a puck mover. In the, I, I, now, see, he said, in an ideal world. Again, a need that has gone back multiple years. There is uh, no excuse. They have the assets. What is really irksome is... If cap space then becomes an argument point for Mark Bergevin, why did you sign David Savard? That $3.5 million could be used for another defenseman. You know what I mean? Or Ben Sherrod has a year left. If you look at the prices of Brandon Dillon is getting, a pair of second rounders, so high on Ben Sherrod. After that playoff run, his value is sky high. If you, anything about asset management... The Habs are in a position here. Not to mention, the Carl Alsner buyout going into this offseason was lower. Jake Allen's cap it goes from $4 million down to two point eight. It just There was opportunity this offseason to sort of get that defenseman I, I've personally been screaming for for years. And so far, I don't, I don't see that. Right now, the Montreal Canadiens have their first, their second. They have a pair of thirds, a pair of fourths. There's, it's the draft capital hasn't been as strong as it's been in the years past, but you've got young prospects now. Uh, I just there, there, there's a chance for Bergeron to do something, a difference maker on the back end, and I just I, I hope he does it. Otherwise, the Canadians are going to be what they've been for the past couple of years. They're they're not they're not god awful. They're not amazing though. They're out, right outside the bubble. They missed the playoffs by five six points. There would be like 15th overall selection in the draft, and they're not going to go anywhere. And Habs fans, we've been dealing with that since like 2017. And I don't think we want another four or five years of that. There, again, there, there must be a trade. Not to mention, there is more pressure on Montreal. Because if you look around the Atlantic Division, the work that the Panthers have been doing... Oh my! The Bruins have just signed Linus Allmark. Apparently they've signed Nick Foligno. They extended Taylor Hall. The Bruins are just a cheat code. Uh, Bergeron's got to do something. He has to do something. It, it sounds like a repeat of every offseason ever. But uh, there is expectations after that finals run. And he's got to deliver. I think that's everything. Uh, I don't think... Unless there's some other significant news to accompany it. I'm going to make solely a video just for in case of Perry re-signing. I've got a gut feeling he's not now, and it's kind of sad, but... Any oh, actually, wait a minute, before I go, I just realized I haven't made a video about Joel Armia re-signing. He makes, I believe it was a four-year deal, yes, $3.4 million. He almost gets Paul Byron's deal, but a little younger. Uh, Joel Armia is a force. It sounds like he could have gotten much more on the open market, around towards $4 million. I like him. I like having him in the bottom six. When Joel Armia's on, he's on. He's just got to find some consistency. Sorry, it's a quick thought there. Anyway, uh, that's it. So far, the Canadians offseason, a little underwhelming, a little questionable in my opinion. And again, it's just, a, it's not a great time to be a Habs fan right now. There's a lot of, um, uh, kind of like with Hoffman, there is a black cloud around this fan base because management are making some questionable decisions, um, some shameful decisions, I should say. It took until the Molson statement to acknowledge the victim of the Logan Mayu stuff, which, again, at the end of the day, let us never forget, um, the person mainly affected who should be considering all this is the victim. And that's where I'm going to leave it today anyway. Um, thank you for watching. Again, looking back, the Logan Mayu video... It sucks that it had to be made, and it was, it was selection in the first place for the Habs. That got 400 views, which for a channel for 32 subscribers is pretty sick. So I appreciate everyone who watched that. Um, again, it wasn't the easiest subject to eat up you to probably listen to, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Anyway, this will be it, um, and I'll see you whenever the Habs do something uh, noteworthy again. Hopefully this time it's for the better, though. Have a good day, night, evening, whatever. Goodbye.